Russell Fork Pharmacy is your locally owned pharmacy, offering fast, friendly service with competitive prices and free delivery. Call 606-754-7085. Visit russellforkpharmacy.com and download our free mobile app for refill requests and more. Uh, for their lunch and dinner tomorrow, if you need it for you, pack it up in the comments and how we connect. Our bill, uh, let's make on there. And the work that we're doing with the, with the farmer's market and the Kane Kitchen is about trying to grow a healthier community. We did a, a research project, data-based research, to try to understand the challenges that these people are facing, to try to understand some of the common issues around housing, access to clean water, uh, access to transportation, school quality, caregiving, whether or not you can connect to the regional economy. But we know that data only tells part of the story, and what we really want to uplift are uh, the people who are actually experiencing these things. And so we've gone to um, several different communities around the country, Chicago, New Orleans, Oakland, and then here in Whitesburg in Letcher County, Eastern Kentucky, caregiving is what we've been talking about here in Letcher County. We're talking about jobs, we're talking about access to healthy food, we're talking about immigration. So we know that there are a lot of layers to this and there's no way that we can represent perfectly each and every individual, but we know that we can, by going into diverse communities, really help to bring to light some of the stories that are important. We're thrilled to death that we have providers who are accessible to us at all kinds of hours, but, but we want everyone to be able to have health care. For a lot of people that don't have family, two days a week, it's all good. You know, I, I feel like that needs to be we are not the experts on your place, uh, there's a lot that we don't know, but we want to come uh, and, and build partnerships and support local organizations and local communities that are working to solve their own problems and find ways to support that. An attempt to affect policy, to affect change, to affect the livable spaces uh, for Americans around the country, we want to be able to use story and use narrative to that effect. Arts can spark the conversation. Never did the poem itself change the policy. Never did, have I seen, you know, um, a, a song, a play, or anything of that nature make, you know, the, 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 the towers of oppression come tumbling down. But it inspired the, the mind. You know, it's like Tupac said, I'm not going to change the world, but I'm going to spark the mind that's going to do it. Right? And so we hope to create the kind of art that's going to spark enough minds to think more critically, more intersectionally about all of these different facets of struggle, of oppression, and realize that they're connected. You're not suffering alone in Letcher County. You're not suffering alone in Mossville, Louisiana, New Orleans, Louisiana. You're not suffering alone in Chicago, Oakland, because we share the same issues, right? And if we can, you know, triangulate that, collectivize that, put communities in conversation, help each other to see each other, right, and help those um, things to come to the fore, we believe that we can spark some of the change inside of people's minds and hearts and thinking and actions that eventually leads to people creating the type of activity that changes the policy. I was living in a single wide trailer with my mom who has raised me, you know, single my whole life. And we're just repeating the cycle. But uh, other than that, I, you know, we all usually need, when she was having to pay out of pocket, for an ambulance to transport her family member to a doctor's appointment. One of the, the goals that I think could be easily met is that we give humanity to each other. We don't come in pointing fingers saying, hey, you know, this is the reason this is happening. These are the people who are causing this to happen, and this is what needs to be done about it. We're putting a face to it and giving it a story. I can sit here and tell you all day about my political views and my views on what the world should look like and what the economy should look like, but if I tell you a story about who I am and why I am the way I am and why I think that way, you're going to resonate with it a little bit more than me just preaching at you. I feel like we're at a tipping point and that there's, there's a lot of energy and momentum going towards, um, towards growth in our community.
if our neighbors are suffering, if my if the students that my granddaughter is in class with don't have the things that they need, don't have the health care that they need, don't have the um, the resources that they need, then the whole class is going to suffer. I think we were given the platform to tell each other stories and to associate each other with stories rather than just our professional titles or just our names. You know, all of these people who are here, I'm going to remember them by a story they told me about their grandmother, by a story they told me about addiction they face, about a hardship they faced in their life that I can relate to my life because a lot of us have more in common than we think we do. I think the, the broader picture that we're trying to paint is of what's shared across those places because we don't want to and we don't think there's any necessity for them to be competing with each other. We think that in this nation we have more than enough resources to meet everybody's needs. As glorious green harvest your name, this righteous blossom the miles of your five children, 20 grandchildren, 35 great grandchildren, your name is to be reborn and exalted upon all our tongues again and again and again and again. I didn't expect, but I'm glad that I experienced that. It's, it's, it was a positive.